the 61st chapter, verses 1 through 4. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities the devastations of many generations.
continue with readings from Isaiah 61, verses 8 through 11. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. May God bless the reading, hearing, and understanding of these words this morning. Our scripture this morning from Isaiah comes to us from the Hebrew Bible. This might be a little weird because, well, we're in the middle of Advent. We're talking about the birth of Christ. We should be reading out of the Christian Testament. We should be hearing the words that come from the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, for they tell of the birth of Christ. Now, may, maybe you are right, and, 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 but hear me out as, as we go on. But in John chapter 1, verse 23, we read the words that John spoke to the Pharisees, and what he spoke was a quote from Isaiah. Later on, Jesus will speak, and what Jesus speaks is quotes from Isaiah. The book Isaiah is quoted throughout the Christian Testament, so it's nice to sit and to understand and to go over those words, to hear them, to understand. So we are going to look at the scripture of Isaiah this morning. We're going to look at how it spoke to the people. We're going to look at how it speaks to us. We're going to look and see how it speaks. These words written so very long ago, how they speak to the here and the now. We are going to look at this scripture at this time of Advent, this time of coming hope. And understand that through these words, we are being told all that we need to know. We are being told all that we need to do. We are being told why we need to act. We are being told that through this, hope will come through God. And so we begin this morning in the 61st chapter of Isaiah, verses 1 through 4, and then 8 through 11. And I want you to understand this really nice, because in these eight verses, we have three different voices speaking to us. In verses 1 through 4, we have the voice of the prophet Isaiah speaking to us. In verses 8 and 9, we have the divine voice of God speaking to us. In verses 10 and and 11, we have the response of the people of Israel, the response of us. The first voice is the voice of the prophet, and it contains in the verses 1 through 4, and it begins with the words, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. The prophet is talking to us inspired by the Spirit of God and telling us of the wonderful and gracious salvation that is coming to the people. This is a text about salvation and mission, about the saving grace that is coming to us and about what we need to do to help bring that salvation 
here and now. So salvation that is spoken spoken of here comes to us in the words from the prophet where he says good news, healing, liberty, release, and comfort. These are our salvation. All of these things is being led by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is leading the prophet to say these words. And the Spirit of God is leading us to act upon these words. For we are called to spread the good news just as the prophet. We are called to help with the healing of this world, to make sure that liberty rules throughout for all people, to help those who are bound find release, and to comfort all of those who are in need. As the Spirit acts upon the prophet, we Allow the Spirit to act upon and through us. The Lord God will bring this salvation into fruition. We have to listen, to act, and to obey with obedience. The second voice, verses 8 and 9, come to us from the divine voice of God. And it begins with the words, For I, the Lord, love justice. God is speaking to us directly now, telling us what it is that is in God's heart, what it is that God is looking for us to do into this world. And the first words speak loudly. For I, the Lord, love justice. God shows us what we are to do. And in turn, God shows us that he has faith in all of us. The faithfulness of God is with us throughout our lives, no matter how down we get. If we are listening to the words, if we are following the will of God, then all that we need will come to us. There was a covenant made between our ancestors and God, and that covenant remains today. And it has been strengthened through the new covenant made for us. The everlasting covenants have been made and will continue to be made with us. We are a part of these covenants. We have a job to do through these covenants. God is showing us the ways in which to live in this world. For as God loves justice, we should love justice. As God hates evil and wrongdoings, so shall we hate evil and wrongdoings. But this is not new. We have heard this time and time again. I have spoken about this time and time again. We have read it in the Hebrew Bible, in the Christian Testament, over and over again. Love all. But how often do we listen to the words? How often do we act upon those words? God is telling us what is in the heart of God. God is telling us what should be in our hearts as children of God. And God is showing us how to live in this world. When we act in accordance to the will of God, we teach ourselves and we teach others around us. Our friends, our family, and those who come after us, they will learn from our actions. They will learn from our examples. They will learn from our love. When we live out the will of God, other nations, other people will take notice. They will see that we are people of God. They will see that we act in the way of God, that we walk in the footsteps of God and of Christ and of all of those who have come before us because we live the life of God. We don't just talk about the life 
of God. God loves justice, so we are to act justly. The third voice that we hear this morning in our text is the response of the people. The response that we should be given. For this is the response of all of those who heard the message of God, who heard the words of the prophet. This is their voice. And it begins with the words, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. We have heard the prophet share what the Spirit of the Lord revealed to him. We have heard the voice of the divine speak directly to us. And now it is our turn. Our turn to respond. Our turn to respond to God. Our turn to respond in God's world. We are told that we need to praise God in all that we do, that our whole being shall exult in God. Everything that we do is for God and for the will of God. And when we act in the will of God, everything that we do praises God. We are to take up the mantle, to put on the clothes of God, to put on grace, to put on righteousness, to put on love and mercy, and go out into the world, showing all the nations, everyone, God's grace and love, to show them God's acceptance and God's peace, the light of God is reflected from us. Just as a garden, when it's tended and properly helped and tilled, it grows, it thrives, it produces that which is good for the world. God will cause righteousness to come about on this land if we tend to the world. If we help the world, if we cultivate the world, if we allow that which can help the world to spring up from the ground, God will bring righteousness to the land. We must first make sure that the land is ready. I want to read from Paul's letter to the church in Thessalonica. In chapter 5, Verses 19 through 22, Paul writes these words. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of the prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Again, we are told to listen to the prophets. Again, we are told that the words that came before have meaning for the here and the now. Paul tells us to listen to the prophet, to test everything around us through the Spirit of the Lord, to hold on to what is good, to abstain from evil. He says, do not quench the Spirit. And what Paul means is that is do not overcome, do not put out, do not cool, do not destroy the Spirit. For it is the Spirit that has been sent to lead us. We must use the guidance and the inspiration of the Spirit in everything that we do. To hear the words, to follow in the footsteps, to feel the push as it gives you down that road. Because we are to do all of this to bring about this new age. This age of salvation and righteousness here on earth as it is in heaven. To bring about this new year that comes with the birth of a Christ child. Paul tells us in those words that we must test everything. Everything that we do, we must look at through the eyes of God. 
through the love of Christ. Whether it is as individuals, as a community, or as a nation. We must look at what we are doing and then ask ourselves, is this what it means to live the will of God? For if we are not living in the will of God, we are not bringing about righteousness to this world. If we are not living out the will of God each and every day of our lives, we are not fully recognizing this time of Advent. We are not fully understanding the hope that is coming into the world, but that does not stop after Christmas Day. For the hope that comes into this world grows, begins as a child. It grows into a man, a teacher, a guide, a friend. The hope that comes into this world shows us where we are to go. The hope that comes into this world shows us how we are to live. The hope that comes into this world shows the world that together righteousness can be found. Advent does not end when the garland comes down, when the trees are put up, when the lights are turned off. This is an event that goes all year round. We are to celebrate Advent now, tomorrow, and all year. For the hope that comes does not leave when the decorations go down. The hope stays. And when we take this hope, we go out into the world with this hope, telling others about this hope, then we wear the garments of righteousness. Then we put the cloak of Christ upon us and walk out, showing all the love, the grace, the mercy, the acceptance, the peace, the hope that comes with Christ. That is how we give praise each and every day to God. That is how we exalt the Lord with our whole being.